roller coaster would be the word I would choose. Roller coaster. Bit of a roller coaster, hasn't it, all the way through? A bit of a roller coaster for everybody, wasn't it? It's been a bit of a roller coaster, but we're there where we want to be. Fighting. Eventful. Very eventful. Super. Fantastic. Thrilling. There's three. The expectation was the hardest thing that we had to deal with. It was always going to be difficult in the eyes of the fans who, who want us to win every game. Overall, I think we belong in the Premiership. We've done what we've had to do to our division. Bring it on next year, looking forward to it. It's going to be a roller coaster, but now we're right at the top. That's where we're going to stay. Darren Carter for the Premiership. The Premiership! The dramatic playoff penalty shootout in Cardiff five years ago launched the Blues into the Premiership and on a journey that brought new highs not seen at St Andrews for decades. They were part of the establishment, a team full of flair and finesse. Steve Bruce's side are completely outplaying Liverpool. But having taken off in the top flight, last season proved more of a write-off. Well, here's Rooney, who certainly can run. And this is 3-0 Manchester United. Steve Bruce's expression says it all. Humiliation piled upon humiliation for Birmingham City. So time to start that journey again. An end of season sale was just the beginning. I really thought, well, I've got to do something drastic after being relegated. We made 38 changes in total. That is a colossal amount of people going out and people coming in. I remember turning up for pre-season training. Uh, it was like getting to know the whole team again. It was, it was that different, the squad. Did you all have to wear name badges at the start of the season? Yeah, it was, it was a bit like that. Um, Hi, my name's Martin. It's pleased to meet you. All of a sudden, I'm sort of being one of the middle-aged ones. I was one of the older ones, and uh, I didn't like that too much. You look at the teams in the top division, and in this division, teams have done well. They've got a lot of youth in the team, you know, and that's, I think that's what Birmingham are trying to achieve now. Obviously, when a club like Birmingham comes for you, I mean, you can't really say no. I mean, just look at the around. The fans are amazing. Like, so much passion surrounds the club. I'm a hard working striker. I like to create goals for other people, not to score goals, you know. I'm an aggressive player. I play with my heart on my sleeve. Some of the players didn't come till the end. I mean, the Arsenal lads uh, came two days before, so absolutely no preparation whatsoever with them. We had a horrible start last year and didn't recover. We need a good start and get off and running. And if we get off and running, we know that we've got players here who should be able to really, really handle the division and to our favourites, I believe, to go up. And we're hoping that we can match their villain. A chance here from the corner. Taken short, done. And it's uh, Watson who is able to clear, but not very well. Now Neil Dance, here's Ungotti, oh that's delicate, and that's Campbell, and that's 1-0 for Birmingham, first goal of the new season, and DJ is off the mark, good build-up play all round here, lovely little chip inside by Ungotti, and Campbell with a good finish, just the easiest of touches. There's Watson just trying to bulldoze his way through at the moment, but Gotti eventually clears it away. Dugan looking for Curtin, doesn't reach here, but he has four for Garcia, 1 1. Six minutes after half time, and Colchester are back level. There's Cameron Jerome just um, on from the bench, looking to get actively involved. Here he is again. And a bit of a tangle with Dugan. Oh, now. Was there contact there? Referee Mr. Stroud had a good view of whatever happened. A little pushover. Did he strike him in the face? It's a straight red card. Four minutes into his debut, and Cameron Jerome is off. 
bit of restructuring to do in the Birmingham lineup. Vance. Here's Johnson. And pick up the youngster Larson. It's a good ball by him towards Kelly. Bentner, good touch. Great touch. Great goal. What a strike by Nicholas Bentner. The 18-year-old on loan from Arsenal has put pure delight in this St Andrews crowd. What a good goal that was. Well, the cross was tantalising. The touch tamed it, and then there's the finish. At Sunderland, Niall Quinn was combining the unlikely dual role of chairman and manager. And whilst he looked for Mr Wright, the Blues were keen to take full advantage. Early pressure then from Sunderland, and uh, the throw will be quite long into the area there, and here comes Lawrence! Diving header from Lawrence after Murphy's flick on, and the former Mansfield man probably should have scored. Damien Johnson, bag of tricks over there, loops the ball in, it's up in the air from uh, Collins, a little bit further away, only as far as Nafty, and that first-time shot had Annick scuttling across. is Nafti, oh, overhead kick from him, a touch on from Bender, and now a driving run here by the other man on loan from Arsenal, Mwamba, Clive Clark across, that will be a penalty kick, referee Salisbury had the finger pointing as soon as the player Johnson went down, Clark's challenge, it is inside the area, and referee Salisbury, spot on. It will be Mikel Fossil, and he scores... Not a problem for the Finn, driven in hard and low to the keeper's right. 1-0 Birmingham. Good long throw from Mike Taylor, who looked up there and saw Bentner in space. And this is Nicholas Bentner. Nice little ball from him, a chance for Neil Dans maybe here. It is still Dans, it will break here for Bentner. Oh, and a really weak effort from Nicholas Bentner, should have done better. What we're delighted about is that we've got two results without really, really playing well, but we've showed a bit of bottle and a bit of resilience and a bit of organisation, which some people say we've never had before. Well, uh, there was plenty of that today, and we got the result that we need. Bentner finding Dunn. Here's Moamba, always brought down here. Dave Brammer was late. And Richard Beebe... Had a good look and says penalty for Brammer's challenge on Muamba. Mikhail Fussell with a chance to give Birmingham the lead. Simerton guesses correctly and makes a fine save and then smuggles the ball behind for a corner. Top quality goalkeeping from Steve Simonson, who plunges to his right and was able to recover and push the ball behind. Sweeney. Into Sadibi, great chance here for 1 0. And Taylor makes a super save. Strong right arm guarding his near post. Two minutes remaining. Peter Sweeney with the free kick, which is on target. And Taylor again makes another critical stop. Following a fruitless afternoon in front of goal, attentions turn to the Rico Arena. Not because Coventry were the Blues' next opponents, but all down to the pursuit of a special talent. Sheffrey. Oh, he scored! It's his first ever goal for Coventry City. Well, that's getting quite boring now, that, I've got to say. You know, Brucey uh, and Birmingham uh, must have got the gist of this one. You know, uh, he's not for sale. Four or five bids went in for Garrett and Sheffrey. We finally got him. Why were you so determined to bring him here? Quite simply, his goals, his goal-scoring uh, achievements, especially last year in this division, and the position that he played in, is something that has obviously attracted us to him. And if he comes and gets us 17 goals here um, from a wide area, then you know we'll be there or thereabouts. That's for sure. Well, this was a career move for me, and um, if, if I didn't think that, then I, I wouldn't have come here. And I do feel that with the players, the managers brought in, and the squad that's already here, that. You know, they're, they're really going to be put knocking on the door and putting in a push for promotion now. We've paid a lot of money for them, so I'm going to put them straight in the team, that's for sure. Mark Kennedy with space. There's a cross that's cleared away by Young Gotti. And Hudson is first at a loose ball. McEnough. 
There's a shot deflected and in the back of the net for Crystal Palace. It came off Shahidi. McEnough will claim. Dunn's corner. It's McSheffrey with the acrobatics. And the ball still hanging in there and eventually cleared by Palace. Only as far as Nafti shot. Shahidi! Oh, great save. Steve Bruce's men still unbeaten before today. Look for the equaliser. Here's David Dunn. They've backed off. It's a cross that's away by Fletcher. This is Nafty. Thought about the shot. Oh, he's fed Bettner. And that's a cool finish from the Loney to give Birmingham a crucial equaliser. Slipped in by Nafty and completely wrong footed the goalkeeper. Corrales clearance. Away by Jaidi. Hooked back in again by McEnough and Jaidi under it. Taylor just about makes the save. Jaidi nearly marked his debut with an own goal. Sadler's throw to Forsell. Has managed to find David Dunn. Nice turn. Play is coming in onto it. Larson is there. Larson has scored. Surely the winner. The manager lapping up the three points. And it's a substitute, Larson. Two minutes into injury time. Scores his first goal for Birmingham City. And what an incredible finish. Well, they were the only team with won three straight games. And we obviously had seven points. And you know, knew that we would go top of the league if we would win that game. So, um, yeah, it was nice to obviously get my first goal. And uh, so it was a 90-second minute winner or something like that. It made it all. All better. But it was the introduction of another substitute that overshadowed Birmingham's rise to the top of the table. Skipper Damian Johnson unhappy with the crowd's reaction at his withdrawal late on as the Blues pressed for a winner. The whole jeers were the ironic jeers at me, really. So I think he's got wrapped up in all of that, you know, but uh, all I can say is that he's apologised. What we're going to do, hang him out to dry, he's been punished, and we all get on with what we're going to do now. Bentner takes the ball on his chest. Here's Kilkenny. Bentner again, and a run's been made by Larson. Here's Larson, and the deadlock is broken, and Shrewsbury's resistance shattered after 83 minutes. The two on loan Arsenal players linking up. Birmingham head towards round two. And he wants to take it quickly and does to Chopra. Here's Perry again, beaten both defenders, lays it back to Lindley! And somehow it sneaks underneath Colin Doyle. Here's Dunn. It's McSheffrey who's arriving with the header. My word, that was close. Alexander with a save. Dunn's responsibility with a corner. It's um, off Damien Johnson, here's Nafti! Oh, just lifting a little too high. Here's McPhail. Testing out that defence again, not the best of headers from Ungotti. It's uh, hooked back to Chopra! A let off for the Birmingham defence. Here's done. Picks out Jerome, he's onside. Against his old club, can he score? Oh, he's put it over the bar. Bentner felt he should have had it too. It failed. Here's Thompson. He's done well. It'll fall to Parry! Deflected in off Sadler, and Colin Doyle did not stand a chance. It'll be ball, three points now for Cardiff. Clever angle ball from Dunner through the whole ranks. Her McSheffrey first time ball in, and indeed 
CJ Campbell scores for Birmingham City. The whole defence really caught out badly. Dunn's ball there didn't look as though it was going to pose a problem, but when McSheff returned it back, there's a lot of ball watching going on. Myhill had no chance. McSheffrey to swing this one across and plenty of Birmingham bodies in there hooked away by Ashby the ball rebounding from the post McSheffrey with the corner kick 2-0 and Nicholas Bentner on loan from Arsenal has three goals already for the Blues this season awful marking though and Bentner exposed it Fagan, once a Birmingham City player, of course. Nice little touches here. This is Livermore, and that is a delightful goal from David Livermore. Holster very much in this game, and they might have a chance here with Nicky Foster. Rattles it against the upright. That would have made it 2 2. Larson will leave this for Gary McSheffrey to take left footed. Oh, and coming in at the far post completely unnoticed. Bruno and Gotte giving Birmingham the lead. McSheffrey floating the ball over. Paul Jones standing no chance. Oh, and off the ball here, Bentner and Rose have clashed. And with Bentner already on a yellow card, it's him that the referee, Mr. Mellon, has aimed for. And he is shown the red card. Not too many protests from his teammates. And they've let that bounce. And Cameron Giro is in on it. And he's lobbed the ball over Jones and will win it for Birmingham late in the day. 2 0. He's first for the club, putting the pressure on the Queen's Park Rangers defender. And lobs the ball over Paul Jones. The inhabitants of the second city had a lot to thank the capital for during the opening weeks of the season as the three Arsenal loanees made an instant impression on the club while Birmingham made an instant impression on them. It's been good, you know, it's a new experience, obviously new city and new surroundings. But I've been positively impressed by Birmingham, to be honest. I didn't know much about it, but I think it's quite nice. It's shown a tremendous spirit, you know, um, to, to be so young and, and come in and, and do such a good job. Fantastic energy about them, all desperate to do well. No one knew about them, particularly before, because I haven't played in the, the, the Arsenal first team, so you weren't sure, but I mean, the first day in training, you could tell the, the, the quality they were bringing to the squad. Arsene Wenger just told us that there was a good opportunity. It's a good club, big club, and, you know, you need to learn how to play under pressure and, you know, playing for important points. We know each other really well, so it was good to have someone that you know. So I think uh, having them two here is much much easier so that we don't get bored at home by yourself. Yeah, it's always nice when you're a striker to score. Um, but the most important thing for me is when the team wins and when, as we are now, top of the league, top of the table, because uh, we want to to improve and uh, go into the Premiership this season. There's no doubt about it, so a good team, good squad, finish up, no problem. Birmingham well represented in the middle as Dunn prepares to deliver the corner and it's in towards the head of Jaidi. deflection off the line by Sito, hooked back in again by Jerome and Ipswich Town stand firm the corner whipped in by Dunn, Jaidi's done with header, a couple of deflections Ipswich escape Curry turning for Ipswich Town four in the box in support one of them is Jonathan Macken okay, whipping the ball in it's a mistake there by Dunn and Alan Lee profits with an instantaneous turn and a classic finish to give Ipswich Town the lead here's Purcell a neat piece of skill by McSheffrey David Dunn looking to carve a yard for a shot spilled by the keeper and DJ Campbell has lashed in the rebound. It's level at 1-1. Lewis Price, the Ipswich keeper, culpable, spilling Dunn's shot. Campbell lashing in. Now here's Dan Harding. 
Some pushing and shoving going on between Lee and Ngotti. Shooting chance here for Samuel Walton. Deflects up on Gotti and in. And Ngotti is in serious trouble with the referee as Walton celebrates the goal. Well, you can see the altercation there between Lee and Ngotti. Walton had the shooting chance. It certainly took a deflection off Ngotti's back and beat Mike Taylor. And let's switch it back in front again. Four minutes of the 90 left for play. Max Sheffrey standing over the ball. We're all in towards Dunn. First shot blocked. Left footed rebound hits the back of the net. David Dunn levels up the score. And having made a mistake, Ripswich's first goal early in the second half, he's atoned with a clinical left footed finish. We've played quite a few games of 10 men and we've done all right in most of them. That does show some real character and determination within the squad, yeah. We've beat Sheffield Wednesday with 10 men. And we've beat Derby with 10 men. And um, West Brom, we got a late equaliser with 10 men. By God, they never give up. Obviously a nice feeling to know that you can do it, but uh, uh, I'd rather keep 11 men on the pitch, that's for sure. Darren Ferguson comes across to take the corner. It's Williams, and it's Llewellyn, and it's a shot lead for the League Two side, Chris Llewellyn. Larson, nice turn. That's Gary McSheffrey here out on his left-hand side as players getting forward in support. Ball comes in, Jerome, yes for Birmingham, the equaliser. His first at his new home ground and his second goal in seven days. McSheffrey's cross and a cushioned header from Jerome. Kilkenny. It's a nice turn by Bentner and puts Campbell away. Here's a chance. Surely a penalty. It is. Ingham will complain, but referee Armstrong points to the spot. DJ Campbell, the player racing through, and the goalkeeper with a silly challenge. Campbell himself will take. Oh, and he's put it wide. Larson will take the corner. Dunn rises. Clear. Kilkenny. Wicked shot cleared away. This is McSheffrey. Oh, and at last, Birmingham have got the lead. 12 minutes into extra time. Gary McSheffrey with a cracking goal. He's first for the Blues. Jeffrey gets there first, and now there's a chance for a break here for Birmingham. Kilkenny with players either side. Bentner is onside and through. Players with him. What is McSheffrey who he slides in to score? 3-1 now for Birmingham. McSheffrey will celebrate his second of the game. That's Painter's header, which sets Gary McSheffrey away. Helped on into the path of Bentner. Campbell is with him. Bentner goes alone and will score to make it four for Birmingham. This time it was all his own work. And after a long, long night, Birmingham are through to the third round of the Carling Cup. Not even two months in, and the chairman of Leeds had already twitched. Ken Bates dispensed with Kevin Blackwell's services, leaving John Carver in temporary charge. Thankfully, the Blues board stood firm as Steve Bruce's side began to wobble themselves. As always, Eddie Lewis entrusted with the free kick. He has a sweet left foot and he looks up and he gives a message over there. The ball will drop here for Healy. Oh, terrific. And a typical goal from the Northern Ireland international and leads a goal ahead on six minutes. David Healy. Lefty. Hard-driven low ball in here for Martin Taylor. Oh, it's going to be a goal. Oh, that is so unlucky for Tony Warner. But Martin Taylor, the big defender up there, wraps the ball in against the inside of the upright. But how unlucky is that for Warner and for Leeds United? The turn from Healy. Players ahead of him as he sprints forward. The one he finds is Jonathan Douglas. Poor touch from him, but the ball is carried back in here, and that might just be a penalty. Painter, it was on Horsefield, and referee Steve Tanner. Well, it's an unfortunate ricochet that carries the ball there in the first instance. Healy with a chance to grab his second. 
And Leeds have the lead back on 15 minutes. What a game, rip-roaring stuff. 2-1. David Dunn. Bentner here, oh, and he's taken the ball beyond Craney so sweetly, and this is still Bentner, and still Bentner, and still... And a goal for Birmingham City, for Nicholas Bentner, and that's what the boss thinks about it. He flew beyond Craney, Kilgallen couldn't get to him, and the Dane, Nicholas Bentner, has another for his collection of excellent goals for Birmingham City, driven in from the angle... How sweet was that between the legs of Tony Warner? Healy, here comes Steve Stone, the ball in and the ball in the net! Leeds have got another one and may have won the match. Ian Moore is all smiles, but the suspicion is the ball went in off Tavili. We will see from this replay, it was indeed the Birmingham defender's last touch. 3-2 Leeds. Larson holds the handle off and then delivers. Sebele with a jump, cleared away. Nafti, it's Bender! Oh, how did he keep that out? Great save by Conrad Logan. Small amber. Lucky bounce, picks out Larson. Larson has Bender on the inside. He's read the challenge well. Bender! Oh! Well, it was. Kenton who got the block in. Larson. It's away as far as Nafti. Lays it now into McShepherd. Oh, great save by Logan. He's having quite a day. Hughes. Oh, he's slipped. Which has allowed Campbell to nip in now and suddenly sets Birmingham on their way forward. It's McShepherd. On the right foot, what a stunner! Great, crisp, clean finish by McSheffrey. Well picked out by Campbell. And then McSheffrey with perfect poise. Well, that looked like a handball by Hume. Steve Bennett's allowed play on. Here's Josh Lowe. Birmingham have to be careful. Hammond! 1-1! It's a stunner, an absolute stunner. All square again. Jeffrey, aimed towards DJ Campbell, can he find room for a shot? He can! And Birmingham City go in front with DJ Campbell's fourth goal of the season. Lifted over the top by McSheffrey. Plenty of work to do for Campbell, but he used his strength and found power in the shot. Here's Emmanuel, and he's linked up well with O'Leary, and Emmanuel has gone to ground. Is that a foul by Stephen Kelly? Well, referee John Moss says it is. And Luton have the chance to level, but was that not six of one and Hoffa doesn't have the other in that challenge? Here's Rowan Vine. There's the equaliser. Much to the annoyance of Mike Taylor. Corner from Emmanuel. And Bonner's touches on the best, but Vine certainly is. Two goals in as many minutes for the prolific Luton Town striker. Kelly surging forward in towards the run of DJ Campbell. Great determination shown by Campbell. Nafti into the area. And break here for Neil Dans on the spin. What a way to open your goal scoring account. A real gem from Neil Dans. His ball in the area, not dealt with at all well by the Luton defence, but Dan's had work to do and went about it admirably. Morgan, Vine, Davis out wide to the left. 
Davis swings over the cross. And he might fall here for David Bell! He scores his first goal for Luton Town. And the home side are back in front at 3-2. Kelly, Dans. Ball played wide by Neil Kilkenny. This is Larson with a cross, which might just go in. Strikes the frame of the goal, Kelly! Spurns a magnificent chance to level up at 3-3. The expectation was the hardest thing that we had to deal with. And I don't think many realise that when you rip it to bits totally, they need a bit of time. We hit a little bit of a sticky patch where we lost a couple of games and you know drew one and then, then the pressure was really on us. And I think that was the first time um, <clears throat> all the young players really felt the pressure and really felt the expectations we had on us. And the pressure increased further following a 1-0 home defeat to Norwich. The knives were well and truly out for the manager. We had a horrible night against Norwich. It was a woeful performance. Four games without a win left Steve Bruce under the greatest pressure of his five-year reign going into the game. There was still support for him pre-match, but his team did their best to dispel that with a performance that started badly and got steadily worse. Norwich spurned a number of chances, Rob Earnshaw most culpably. Before Darren Huckabee's free kick hit the back of Jason Shackle's head to give them a deserved lead. Birmingham failed to get a shot on target all game. The final whistle brought the inevitable booze, but even then many of the 20,000 crowd were too dispirited to bother. I can't hide away from the fact that it was a, it was a horror show and I think I would have booed myself. They've paid a lot of money for a ticker and I've seen a performance there which was just not acceptable. I want to try and see it through, if that's possible. might not be possible, that's other people's decision. But the way I'm thinking at the minute is I'm more defiant than ever to roll my sleeves up and, and get over it. It'd be easy to just say walk away just because you've had a bad night, but uh, I won't do that. The fans come and, and, and pay a lot of money to watch us perform, you know, and obviously that day um, we never did that. And so they, to me personally, they've, they've, had, they've got all the right to, to say what they want. It was panic stations, you know, everyone was... Yeah, they, want, they were one in the gaffer's head, really. I've seen this sort of situation before in my career, and it's, just, it's never nice, you know what I mean, when people's jobs are getting talked about. I think we had Derby, West Brom and Coventry, and they were three big games to decide the, this club's future, the manager's future, some of the players' future, probably. What I was enabled to do then was bring back the experienced ones. People like uh, Johnson, Clements, Taylor, Nafty, all experienced ones, you know, who could handle the pressure. Both games against Derby, tense, not much in it. Maybe you always know it was going to be one goal that won it. Unfortunately, we got a bit of a break, and I think that set the, the ball rolling for the rest of the season, really. All the way back to Lee Grant in goal. He clears it well. Headed by Johnson. And there's Bentner. Oh, he's beaten the first man, and suddenly he's off on the gallop here, Bentner. Bentner, oh, saved by the goalkeeper, Grant again. That was a terrific run. Bishgard. That's a good run by him and a tricky shot as well, but not tricky enough to beat Taylor. Johnson, here's Bentner. Birmingham looking to press here now. Kelly, shot. And he's blocked only as far as Bentner again. Here's Kelly once more. Scuffed McSheffrey. Clements. Oh, it's taken a deflection and it's in! Well, sometimes you need luck to win games, and that might just be Birmingham's moment. Clements will claim it. Moments like that, you have to, you have to celebrate, and, and obviously I just got a bit carried away at the moment. It did take a bit of a deflection, as we all know, but um, I've, I've always said it was going in the other corner anyway. It was a fluky winner, but you know, you, you, you're going to need that at times. The confidence that just buzzed through the team from that one win was just awesome. Confidence is massive in football, there's no doubt about it. From being a absolute crisis, we go on one of the best runs the club's ever been on. We win 11 out of 13 games, what takes us right the way through to the new year. And look, a very, very good team. Short with the header away, and there's a little flick on there, Akimbaye to Weber. And Weber's spur ball in, and Akimbaye, a little loop shot, and it's gone in. Adi Akimbaye for Sheffield United, they lead on 21.
touches from Campbell and from Larson there, and it's heading back here Campbell's way, and that's a... Oh, my goodness me, what an extraordinary goal! It was played off the goal scorer DJ Campbell by the defender Chris Morgan. And that is a really unlucky goal for Sheffield United to concede, but Birmingham will take it. Short with the back pass. Hoofed away by Ian Bennett. Taylor's headed back in. They're, uh, oh, they're all over the shop here, Sheffield United, and Bentner's going on to score. Birmingham lead for the first time. But it was awful defending. Taylor's header just caught everybody out back there, notably Craig Short and Nicholas Bentner just said thank you. Kelly. And then Short. Another time. Oh my goodness, what a short done here. Well, he's let the man in for another one, and Cameron Jerome will nudge the ball home. And Birmingham City now lead by three goals to one. What was Craig Short thinking about? Surely he must have seen Jerome sneaking up in his eye line. Obviously, he didn't. David Unsworth is rolling the ball short for Montgomery, who piles it in. And Montgomery has brought Sheffield United back into this run at 3 2. Shadler's throw. And Kilkenny, again the Sheffield United defence has just evaporated, they're absolutely nowhere, and there's a goal for Larson, and Blues are on their way into the last 16. I thought we were terrific to make them. The young players, you could see them, you know, after the result at the weekend, just growing a little bit of confidence. You know, it's been a quite unbelievable week in football, a week tonight was possibly my worst moment in, in management and here tonight we've come to a premiership outfit and, and scored four and got through to the next round. The relief and the release for the manager was plain for all to see. Next up, another side whose board had twitched early. Tony Mowbray had replaced Brian Robson at the Baggies, but his new side were no match for a resurgent Blues. It's a perilous moment this for West Bromwich Albion, with McSheffrey over the ball for the Blues. Gary McSheffrey... The perfect free kick. Camera. Kumas. Camera. Onside here. Taylor across. Free kick. Birmingham. And Camera is going to go into the book. A disdainful look from him as he trudges away. Brom have only won on one of their last eight visits to St Andrews. It hasn't been a lucky ground for them. I've been sure of luck here today. Robinson has so gone clattering in. And uh, Johnson. And might be in real trouble here. Oh, he led with an arm. He's off. Clearly, Nigel Miller felt that there was intent there and he's left uh, Damian Johnson looking very groggy indeed <laughs> Superbuller's scuffed clearance back by Dans but Sheffrey might fancy this to finish it off Gary McSheffrey wins the game gloriously a beautifully subtle finish in the 50th minute of the second half and Steve Bruce's smile is as broad as Birmingham McSheffrey in the beginning McSheffrey at the end one glorious free kick one delightful little dance and a super subtle lob and the Derby Day points Belong to the Blues. Muamba, Jerome, Bentner. 
Tamins will roll the ball out to Matthew Sadler. In towards Bender's head. Mistake by Marshall. Birmingham City ahead. Nicholas Bender with a goal. Sadler surging down the left wing. Bender's downward header. Should really have been saved by Marshall. Here's Hutchinson as Coventry pursue an equaliser. It's in towards Leon McKenzie and hits the post. A let off there for Birmingham City. Still danger until Muamba clears away. Jerome in towards Bentner and back towards Jerome and a chance here for two. Jerome! Around the far post. Country have pursued an equalising goal for long stretches of the second half. Here's Hutchinson with another decent delivery. It's in towards Stern John! And he fails to capitalise against his former team. for Rakos Buzaki, he does like to whip the ball in from here. Fire towards the far post, oh, it only needed a touch. How close was that? Kavaldi with the throw. Coming it back from Nellis. Nice little one-two with Buzaki now, Kavaldi with the cross in towards Hales! Oh, that was so close again. it in towards Jaidi. Oh, it was unchallenged. And Birmingham, very much against the play, have the goal. And Radi Jaidi just catching the Argyle defence cold. The Carling Cup brought light relief from the pressures of the Championship. And the fourth round tie against Liverpool revived memories of that agonising afternoon in Cardiff five years earlier. Esky won it. Fowler's on to it. Fowler's hit! Pass equalises at a moment like this. Can he save? It's a horrible moment for the young man, but it is Liverpool's trophy. So it's a cracking tie here tonight. Birmingham City fancying their chances at the moment. Bit of a sense of revenge in the air. Liverpool know what happened to Manchester United last night. Larson, good ball that one. Taylor in there. DJ Campbell was there and a big save there from Dudek. As it seems, Birmingham might sneak in front. How does he get it? I mean, it's a brilliant ball from Martin Taylor just to play this. And DJ Campbell did get a toe to it and it's a good save. Pennant in there again, bouncing around and in by Aga from close range. Scores his second goal for Liverpool, who grabbed the lead here. Cameron Jerome, can he get that Paletta? Pushed him, shoved him pretty hard. Jerome thinks that should be a penalty kick. It has to be a penalty, it's a deliberate push. He doesn't have the ball, Paletta. If you don't have the ball, you cannot shove somebody out of the way because they're not going to get it. And look at that. I mean, how deliberate is that? Zenden took that beautifully, didn't he? Lovely technique from him there. Gonzalez takes on Kelly for pace. Gets around the back of him. Gonzalez, great run, goes down, and the referee gives that and says penalty kick for the foul on Mark Gonzalez. And Birmingham, who feel they should have had a penalty themselves, this time they suffer one. Craig Bellamy. Can he make it 2 0? No, he can't. Mike Taylor saves it. It's a nightmare for Bellamy, and Birmingham are still in it. Well, the reason why it's a nightmare for Bellamy is because he does a step. 
and the, go the goalkeeper actually goes the way that he wants him to when he does the step. Larson's deep cross, Gray! Oh, and it's an instinctive save from Dudek again. It seemed Gray had to score. It's an absolutely superb ball from Larson. Watch Julian Gray, this is perfect for his left foot, just to pop it in. He just comes inside Jermaine Pennant, look at the goalkeeper, across his goal, sharp, he gets that better look, and he holds on to it as well. Break here for Bentner, who really is building quite a reputation for himself in his time at St Andrews, and this is Bentner now inside the area, surrounded by yellow shirts, pulls the ball back, and they lead to Birmingham, thanks to Gary McSheffrey. Colgan left with no chance. Bentner had a crucial role in the goal, and look at the number of yellow shirts around. They couldn't stop Gary McSheffrey. And Bentner with a little nudge. Takes it back from Campbell. Spreads the play here with Larson, and Seb Larson with an opportunity to cross one end. It'll drop for Dans, and at last Birmingham have their second, and it's all coming right now for Steve Bruce. They were calling for his head, but this is going to be five wins in a row in the league for Birmingham City. Neil Downs has just guaranteed it. We were playing with a freedom of not being the top team, you know, not having that everybody look at your expectation. So we were, we were, chase, we were on the chase again. I was going onto the pitch and I, I, no one was going to beat us. I was, I was just, that's the way I felt. I'm sure every player on the pitch felt. And when you're going in with that frame of mind, then it's great to feel like that. Jeffrey! It's a moment of premiership quality. Applauded from just about every quarter of St Andrews. Now to become an instant hero. Two against the Baggies, and now one against the Wolves in the space of three weeks. Referee prepared to accept that. Bothroy! Andy Gray, back to goal, he's still got support by Jones and here's Foster, it's a looping cross and that's turned in by Chris McCann, early lead for Burnley. And Fabrice Moamba nips in, that's McSheffrey, lovely turn and a nice turn of pace as well from the former Coventry man, there's only Bentner in the middle, oh and he's setting up with Bentner and it's in the back of the net, Birmingham equalised. But what a bizarre goal! McSheffrey turned and it's hit two or possibly three Burnley players as the ball came in. That's Duff, it's come off Harley, it's landed at the feet of Bentner. And Wamba shows too much of that to Jones. Nice link up play with No Williams. And Jones is going alone. Steve Jones! Oh, just wide. That would have been some goal.
Kelly's throw into the feet of Bentner, who can turn. And they've backed off. Still Bentner. It's across the face of goal. And turned in by Campbell. The substitute with possibly his first touch of the game. Burnley backed off Bentner. And Brian Jensen, the goalkeeper, spilled it into the path of DJ Campbell. Could be a late winner for Birmingham. It's great for DJ because he started the season very, very well. And over the last six or seven games, because the team's been winning he, and he took a knock, he's had to miss out a little bit, but he reminded us that he can't finish. And there's Lundert Vorma just um, hits it long and high. Janady with a header away. Still a bit of work to do here by the Birmingham defence. Uh, still a bit of danger presenting itself. Kenwin Jones turns. Oh, and he's found the back of the net. Just a hand to it by the keeper, but Kenwin Jones has given Southampton the lead. Well, eventually they take the throw. Here's Jermaine Wright. Oh, it's danger again, and Kenwin Jones again. Two goals in three minutes. Southampton have the upper hand. Here's Pele. Southampton stroking it around with real confidence now. Little chip up towards Jones, back to Skatchel! Oh, they've got it again! Three goals in five minutes, Birmingham are falling apart! Just a little bit of organising to do before the corner can be delivered. Towards Jaini with a good header down, off the line, and scoops it! Chirou, 3-1, maybe there is a glimmer yet. Well, Birmingham fancy their chances of getting back into it now. It was Sermon on the line, who half kept it out, but then in by Giroud. Here's Nafti. Nafti again here. Looking for a way through. Shot was half deflected, but only to Bender! Oh, there is a chance! 20 minutes left to play, and Birmingham back within a goal. Good play by Nafti Nafti. Shot deflected, but only as far as Bender, who really picked his spot well. Gareth Bale is going to hit it as hard and as long forward as he can. Jay, he got a touch to him, it's going to fall for Bradley Wright. Phillips! Saints alive again. Birmingham hopes dashed. Well, we're into stoppage time. They look for consolation, Jay, he's up! came off the defender I think maybe too little too late and the uh, Southampton goalkeeper and defender are not too happy with each other at the moment they're on the winning side well it was a good finish Radi Jaini but it may not amount to too much but it almost did even further into stoppage time DJ Campbell unluckily found the roof of the net the Blues' unbeaten league run reaching an extraordinary end. Capaldi. Georgic has found the full back again. That's a strong challenge by Jaidi. Watson coming out. It's a decent shot. Really good save by Taylor. And as the ball runs away, that'll be a goal kick for Birmingham. The manager looking for some inspiration. Larson. This is Bettner onside. Ran the goalkeeper. Birmingham lead. Nicholas Bentner gets himself into double figures now for the season. It's another smart finish from the Loney from Arsenal, who was onside and finished well. Gary McSheffy, left footed. Has headed off the line, Upson has turned it in. His first goal of the season gives Birmingham a two goal cushion. It was Stephen Clements with the initial header, which was cleared off the line by Capaldi. Upson following in. 
Larson. Bentner helps it on towards Larson. Down the right hand side, he's pulled it back towards McSheffrey. Left foot deflected and into the net. A dream first half for Birmingham, that's 3 0. Bentner, who got a kick for his troubles. But Sebastian Larson, really intelligent play, picking at McSheffrey in so much space. And a deflected finish. David Norris trying to take them all on himself before finding Hales. And this could sit up for Barry Hales, who gets in a shot which Taylor spills. at Samba deflected and Samba again. Taylor does enough and Jaidi clears the danger. Really good double save by the Birmingham City goalkeeper. First played second when David Nugent's Preston North End visited St Andrews, but the man soon to be handed his first England cap was somewhat overshadowed by the Blues' big money signing, who again served up a masterclass in finishing. St Ledger. Off goes Nugent in pursuit, and Jaidi had to stretch a long way. Ormrod came back to Nugent! After 70 seconds, there's Upson off the line. It was Chris Cedric that saved the day for Preston. That's Hadler. There was a slip there by St. Ledger. Gary McSheffrey. shock is that it's taken 31 minutes to arrive. Goalkeeper seemed to be wrong-footed. That was because of the deflection of Matt Hill. It meant that Nash was helpless. McSheffrey's ninth goal since signing from Coventry. He's making a major difference. Sadler. McSheffrey, that's neat. That's very neat. Two in seven minutes for Gary McSheffrey. And what must Preston be feeling? They now find themselves trailing by two. And the key to this was the slight of foot and the quick thought of Gary McSheffrey. Preston deserves something from this first half. And Ormrod makes sure they get it. Lou Amber. Larson. McSheffrey. Blocked off. St Ledger has a yellow card against his name. Seems like there will be no further sanction, although there might have been. And in circumstances such as these, there can be only one choice to take the penalty. It's Gary McSheffrey. And it's a hat-trick! Birmingham will stay top of the championship tonight. And from the crisis of mid-October... They are hurtling towards the midway point of the championship season, carrying all before them. Are you surprised at the number of goals that are coming your way? Um, not really, no. You know, we've got, got two good strikers that, you know, that create chances for me drifting in off the left, so um, we, we create a lot of chances. And um, to be honest, it's, it's just about putting them away when they come, so we, we've got a good return amongst us at the moment. One of the biggest contests on the pitch was who would take the penalty. The manager said to me a couple of times that he, he wants me taking penalties. We've missed a few early on in the season, and in my opinion, it was never going anywhere else. You had to slap him down a bit, though, did you, in the meantime? Well, you know, he's, he's, just, he's, he's a young lad, and you know he's got to respect his elders sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> You're not that old. <laughs> no, no, honestly, he's, he's a great lad. There's, there's no hard feelings about it, and um, we'll just get on with it. I hit a bit of a purple patch throughout November, December, you know, where anything I was touching really was flying in and the fluency and attacking football we were playing was just top draw really and we, 
we were at the top for a reason and everyone was taking note of it. As a defender, the game becomes a lot easier because you know there's, you can, not that you take risks, but you know but if we're letting one, we're going to score three, so it's, it's not so bad. As a team, you can play like that. I mean, without his goal, we probably wouldn't be where we are. We scored 16 goals, top goal scorer in the team. For a midfielder to score that much goals is, is, a, is a benefit because it takes a bit of pressure off the forwards. He has been and will be a fantastic signing for the club. At the end of the day, it's what I was getting paid to do. I attack of midfielder and I get paid to score and create goals and that's what I was doing. McSheffrey's hat-trick cemented Blue's position at the top. Perfect timing as Steve Bruce celebrated five years in charge at St Andrews. The manager now set his sights on a promotion party. Laguerre indicating where he's going to knock this one in and Andrews up for it. Might drop her to Andrews again here. A chance for Burton. Oh, a one-handed stop from Mike Taylor, who might have another save to make. Well, he did his job, Mike Taylor there, and Brunt fired over. That's Lee Bullen climbing into the headed clearance. Sheffrey and then Cameron Jerome here fires one in hard and Crossley parries it, but there's still going to be a goal for Birmingham. Birmingham lead thanks to Stephen Clements's presence after Crossley could only parry, and it was a cracking shot here from Cameron Jerome. Maybe Crossley should have done better, but Clements was following in. A good tackle from Sadler. And McSheffrey releasing Jerome down that left channel. Still Cameron, uh, Jerome goes on and pulls this one back in here. There might be a goal for Larson. Bullen tickles it away. He's furious. He thought the ball had gone out. And the referee laws over to remonstrate with Lee Bullen. Bentner. Oh, a marauding run from him. Pursued by Simic. And it breaks for Sadler, the ball over the top, McSheffrey's onside, the arms were raised, but McSheffrey will certainly keep this one in play, and it is Gary McSheffrey! Lovely goal from the man from Coventry, who is turning out to be one of the buys of the season. How clever was this? He broke the offside trap, no doubt about that, and then with everybody looking to see who he was going to pass to, he did it all by himself. To Gay. Oh, he's not got any pace on that at all. And uh, Jerome is on his way here, surely to make it three. And three it is. Liebel and the standing goalkeeper. No hope at all. Jerome's goal, 3 0. And the Blues are going to be top of the table tonight. Bullen, the poor fellow who's played in every position for Sheffield Wednesday, left totally exposed. Strong challenge by Nefty on Bradbury, but Mike Thorpe had a good look at it and says play on. And here's Mike Sheffrey for Birmingham driving at the South End defence. Has support. Here's DJ Campbell. What a stunning goal for Birmingham. DJ Campbell on eight minutes. Mike Sheffrey running at the South End defence. And what about that for an outstanding finish from DJ Campbell? Gower with a ball and towards Alan McCormack. Great defending from Stephen Clemens to put McCormack off. Typically towering header from Jaidi. Good turn from Campbell. Damian Johnson in support. Johnson with a cross. Comes off Sodji's head. It might break here for Stephen Clemens. And a second Birmingham City goal. Clemens is in great individual form at the moment. And he doubles Birmingham's tally. Bounced up at a height where Clemens was able to control the half volley. Nicholas Bentner. Determined run, poked through, whistle's gone, it won't count from DJ Campbell. Mike Thorpe had already blown before Bentner's neat touch went into the path of Campbell. Whistle going there. You might argue that an advantage should have been played. Free kick. McSheffrey kills it! Well, I suppose justice has been done. Birmingham City absolutely flying at 3-0 up with the left boot of Gary McSheffrey proving so clinical.
Nafti. Kelly. Kill Kenny out wide to Johnson. Jaidi in the middle calling for the ball. And it's sent towards Jaidi. And the Tunisian powerhouse makes it 4 0 to Birmingham City. Really has been an outstanding team performance, epitomised with the quality of the goal and the number of players involved, culminating with Johnson's cross and an unstoppable JD header. He's a fantastic header of the ball. He's good, as I've seen. He heads it and he wants to head it. Having a centre back chipping in with six, seven goals as well is, is a massive benefit to the team. Just send Rahad, he'll put it in the mix and he'll get his head on it. You just got to try to get the ball anywhere near him. He'll come running in, and there's not not much to stop him. That's for sure. I'm glad he don't have to defend them. I'm glad I'm not picking him up. The delivery in from Larson and McSheffrey is exceptional as well. But you know, he, he really gets up there at the back state. Is he as frightening as he looks? Oh no, he's like pussy get ready. <laughs> There were further celebrations ahead of the Boxing Day fixture with QPR. This famous old ground had witnessed the highs and lows associated with a hundred years of football. And a hundred specially selected supporters were given a guided tour, with tales of bygone days and former heroes who graced the hallowed turf. The Ken Leakes, Mike Hallowell, and then moving up you've got Trevor Hockey, of course Trevor Francis as well. Jimmy Bloomfield, Malcolm Beard, Terry Hennessy, lots and lots of the old names. They were real players. Oh, right, Slusty! Johnson can finish it! Clear the end five! Birmingham are heading for Cardiff! But it was the current stars who were carrying all before them, and a sellout crowd greeted the modern day heroes who weren't about to spoil the celebrations. Here's Cook. Nafti, oh, done well there, Mehdi Nafti, real terrier-like response from him, and suddenly Bentner's racing free now. Well, half saved by the keeper, and just about pushed wide by Damien Stewart. There's a real chance, though, for Nicholas Bentner. Sheffrey. Swing over towards Upson! Oh, great header! Great, great header! Really presence and a good strong finish from a way out to goalkeeper no chance well, handball play him against Mark Bircham and uh, Stevie Bruce is pretty insistent here's Furlong trying to pick his way through it's Lee Cook on the right foot curls it oh that's flattened things it's a very sweet strike from Lee Cook. There's Upson. Only as far as uh, Nafti, now Campbell. Campbell with a shot, oh, it's a good one too, but Royce was the equal of it. Terrific effort here, did well to hold off the challenge and then let fly. It's saved by Royce. A little bit of uh, pressure here on Royce, but unable to get it away. Not the best of clearances. Bailey's header, picked up by Nafti. Here's Bentner, little flick on towards McSheffrey. Things are opening up here. Jerome's free. Oh, he's got it. Now the celebrations can begin. Birmingham City back ahead. Well worked goal to Bentner's little flick on. McSheffrey, all the time and space in the world, might have gone for goal himself, but saw the better option was Jerome. With the January transfer window looming, all eyes turned to Matthew Upson, as the rumours of an imminent move away from Birmingham just wouldn't go away. It's out of my hands in a way. All I have to focus on is my performance. Whatever decision the club makes, whatever happens in January, you know, I'm sure they'll approach me with something if it does happen, but I just want to do the best that I can for the club. Um, it's been a long layoff for me and I'm really glad to be back. Um, so to help the club get promoted again would be fantastic. It would take a huge offer, absolutely massive for anybody to tempt us. And thankfully, the owners who employ me have got a few quid, so we don't need any money. Um, and it would be fantastic if he can be with us until at least the end of the season. The chairman, meanwhile, was more concerned with opening doors for those who sought a longer-term future at the club. Bringing in players at this stage, they need qualities to help uh, secure promotion and then the ability to carry on contributing once we're in the Premier. Otherwise, you know, you, you go back to um, uh, another big clear out and bringing in all fresh players. And I'd rather not, and I'm sure Steve uh, uh, would think the same. 
pre-season favourites for promotion with the bookmakers. They've started in recent weeks, Birmingham, to justify that tag. Luton have been going in the other direction. They need to stop the rot. The pitch here, incidentally, is going to be replaced in a, about six or seven days' time. It is a little bit patchy, but it hasn't stopped Birmingham recently. The only way it has been up for Steve Bruce and his side since the lows of mid-October. Lewis Emmanuel bombing forward from fullback. Lovely for Vine. Off the post. And another escape for Birmingham City. Good burst forward from young Stephen Kelly. The deflection off Barnett. Oh, brilliantly kept alive by Bender. Cameron Jerome. McSheffrey. 1 0 Birmingham. Gary McSheffrey does it again. Well, they've got Nicholas Bentner to thank for this because every single player that I basically know would have let this go out for the corner. Jerome picks up the bits and pieces. They get fortunate here with a flick off Carlos Edwards, but it bounces beautifully onto the floor for Gary McSheffrey. If you give him a second attempt, he won't miss it. Disappointing from a Luton perspective initially. Barnett trying to keep this one alive. Might get a chance for a shot. Here's Rowan Vine, 1-1. The equaliser that Luton will feel they deserved. And it's Rowan Vine. Morgan. Oh, it's come through to Warren Feeney. Feeney, 2-1 Luton. Now is this Birmingham winning run going to come to an end? And are Luton going to do the double? Kilkenny. They're queuing up inside the penalty area. Deflected off Carlos Edwards. Helped on by DJ Campbell. Jaidi! They've done it! Off the bench to level it up. Neil Dance for Birmingham. Jaidi has got no right whatsoever really to get this ball. But he makes it his by jumping over the top of Richard Langley. And he's thinking, right, I'm up there, I'm over here, I'm having that. Bang, down it goes. Once it bounces in front of Dance, he just this time wraps his foot round it and into the top corner. And there you are. Show some character. by Johnson to find Mwemba. Kelly bursting down the right-hand side. It's his cross. Up goes Bentner! Good save by Price. Referee deciding that Price didn't get a touch on that. They've hit the bar and gone over. Bruce. Oh. Alex Bruce has committed Harry Carey here, and Bentner's shot was blocked by Lewis Price. And Alex Bruce has got out of jail. Dans against Bruce. And Bruce gets a foot in. And Leguinski against Dans. And Leguinski almost brought it away. Lee. Roberts against Kelly. That's a good cross. And a chance for Williams! Gabby Williams has broken the deadlock. I always think the Christmas period, it's a difficult time. And the one thing when you've tired bodies a little bit, it's a little bit of a leveller. And uh, to be fair, we have looked a little bit jaded, we looked a bit leggy, so... But everybody's the same. We all knew we had to play four games. We've come out of it, we're six points clear of the third-point team, so we've got a long way to go. It's still only, only January. All the clichés are going to come out. <laughs> we've got to put it behind us. We haven't played well in the day, but it's going to happen. We've had an unbelievable run, and uh, let's hope we can go on another one. So the curse had already struck. Steve Bruce named Manager of the Month following five wins and a draw in December. Indeed, January brought the promotion charge to an abrupt halt as first the FA Cup and then the surface at St Andrews intervened. 
Now Larson steadies himself to deliver. Plenty of height on that. Upson will challenge, and it's touched in. It's DJ Kemble. His love affair with the FA Cup continues. Shay Given never had a prayer of keeping that out. Is there to be an equaliser before the break? James Milner's corner, and it's touched in! Stephen Taylor came to meet it! Launched forward for Martins to chase, Jade isn't sure, and he's held back Martins, surely! The flag is waved, and Mike Dean has a big decision to make here. It looks as though it will be red. Birmingham's afternoon has suddenly turned right around. Huge punt, but it won't reach McSheffrey. Larson, dance, and the substitute gives the ball away. Martins, Dyer, Kieran Dyer in to try and make it 2-1, and he's done it. Newcastle lead, they've turned it around at St Andrews. Sadler. Johnson. Made the angle. Neil Dan's leapt for it. And there's Larson! <laughs> Completely up against it. Out of the blue. The blues are level. Newcastle United made to pay for cruising. Helped on by Neil Dan's. And Larson managed to turn David Edgar. And it is a superb finish from the Swede on loan from Arsenal. The club had decided to invest over £100,000 on a new playing surface to help the style of football the manager wanted to play. But the FA Cup tie had left just a week's window in which to get the job done. As the weather turned, the ground staff were left with no chance of having the pitch ready in time for the match against Leeds. Referee Rob Stiles concurred giving the players some welcome extra day's rest to prepare for the replay on a pristine St James's Park pitch. As it stands, no top-flight team has been put out by championship opposition this year. And even though Birmingham City are riding high at the top of the Football League, history and tradition is against them here tonight. Newcastle United haven't lost a home FA Cup match for nearly 10 years run of 16 games. I think we just knew there wasn't an expectancy level on us that night. We had nothing to lose, nothing to fear. We kind of just said, let's enjoy it, and we know we can play good football. And it's a different game to the Championship, you know, it's not, it's not all hustle and bustle. Newcastle wanted the ball, play football, and then they'd let us have the ball, and fortunately our football was pretty awesome that night. We've got it. Up for Cameron and Jerome. And Jerome might well get in a shot here. Two Newcastle defenders made sure that he didn't. Paul Huntington and Stephen Taylor combined a good effect. Larson's cross is decent, and what a chance this is. It's McSheffrey and Birmingham City lead. Five minutes played, and Steve Bruce's side has the advantage. Gary McSheffrey nets for the 15th time in Birmingham colours. Solano touches it home. What a night this could be for Birmingham City. Milner. Oh, what a strike! That is a superb hit from James Milner. DJ 
Campbell might be away here, and he's clipped right on the edge of the box. Now, was that Stephen Taylor? If it was, this is trouble for Newcastle United. Well, if the referee deems he's a last defender, he has to go. There he's it going. is. He'd been booked anyway, but that was a straight red. Birmingham City, a goal to the good, and now with a one-man advantage. And what a position this is for them. No defenders back on the goal, though. As Larson hits it. And it's in! Bruno and Gotti! Birmingham's two-goal advantage is restored. Oh, they're really in the box seat now. Well, you don't really associate Bruno and Gotti with scoring goals. Certainly not with finishing them like that. It's his second goal for Birmingham City. What a peach. Campbell, Jerome. It's not it through for Larson. That's it. Fourth round, Birmingham City. Sebastian Larson has hurt himself in scoring the goal that well and truly seals it. Birmingham City fans won't care a jot right now. They're in dreamland and they're going to go and play Reading in the fourth round. It's Kilkenny and here's Campbell who's onside. Could it be five? Oh yes, it could. Campbell just waiting for his moment to pounce, he's got his goal. Oh, it's a complete demolition job now. Yes, Steve Bruce is in dreamland. Well, I never thought I'd come and bring a team here to Newcastle and win 5-1. So I'll remember it for a long time. I may as well just chuck it now. <laughs> it doesn't get any better. But, uh, you know, I'm a Newcastle lad and, of course, coming back is always a bit special. These dramatic pictures show the moment that incredibly forced another league postponement. High winds had caused part of a nearby hotel roof to fall right next to Leicester's ground, leaving no option but to call the game off in the interests of spectator safety. Good feet by Oster. Harper, solo away to his right-hand side. Kitson unmarked in the middle at the moment. And here is Kitson, can he turn and shoot? Yes, he can! That's what this fella's all about. Welcome back to the first team, Dave Kitson. Harper through for Lita. Awkward bounce, but he might get the shot away anyway. Taylor gets the block in. Convy to collect it for Reading. Five minutes to go until half time. Convy has managed to wriggle himself away from Johnson. The ball in. Lita! 2 0 Reading. Birmingham have had all the chances. Reading have had two, but Reading have scored two goals. And it's helped on by Campbell, but no purchase on it. And Reading should be able to clear. Back in by Ungotti. Peels for offside, but Jerome has it here, and it's Martin Taylor of all people to let it fly and find the bottom corner. Martin Taylor with his first goal for nearly two years pulls Birmingham back into this FA Cup tie. Harper, Sol. Oh, it's a nice touch, Lita to settle it. Lita has surely. And Larson finds the top corner. Excellent technique, beautiful delivery, but it won't really matter because now on my watch we've played not just the 90 but the four minutes of additional time. After scoring three times in two games against the Blues already this season, the manager identified Luton Town striker Rowan Vine as the man to help keep the promotion push on target. Vine signed on a three-and-a-half-year deal after hitting 14 goals in the first half of the season for the struggling Hatters. It's Rowan Vine, 1-1! One, one. There was other clubs interested, but like I said, I mean, if it's going to be a, a club in this, uh, this league, you, you want to be going to one of the big ones, and, and one that's doing well, and you can't get much bigger or, or doing much better than Birmingham. So it was a little bit one step, but really interested. It was a little bit of a no-brainer. As one signed on, another made way, and there was genuine disappointment from the boss when David Dunn left to rejoin his former club. Now 
Yeah, doing very well again from right back. Morrison lets it run. Dunn must score. Does. 3 1 Birmingham. David Dunn back at Blackburn. He'll have loved this moment. That's sad and frustrated, really, because I remember blowing most of my budget when I got up in the second year to say, well, he was that good a player to get somebody who like came with 23, 24. Everybody knows he's a fantastic footballer. But unfortunately, when you look at his playing record over the last three years for us, it simply hasn't been good enough. So I'm happy with what we've got at the moment. So I hope that the transfer window just comes and goes and leaves us all alone. I have to say that. But it wouldn't. And just before it was firmly slammed shut, Matthew Upson joined West Ham for the massive fee everyone was hoping would never materialise. It was a brave decision with so much resting on the remainder of the season and one that would cause yet further discontent amongst some sections of the supporters. And it's in, and it's Matthew Upson who has scored it! Johnson from Muamba. And Larson has pulled out to the right-hand side. This is Larson. That's come off fine, and that's Clark. It may be an own goal, he's touched in by Jerome. It may have already been over the line by then, but Birmingham won't care. They're one goal to the good. It was Vine, and then Clark's header, one that Cameron Joan can look at later. Larson or Nafty? It will be Larson. Oh, off the post, McSheffrey. It's gone wide. I think he was pulled back, and they've got a case there, you know. Gower. So Campbell Rice racing through the middle. Sadler. But it's come back off, Sadler from Taylor's clearance. Birmingham may have survived, this is Campbell Rice. Tees up Mayer, and Southend have scored. It's one each, the captain, with a blistering finish after a real mix-up. McCormack into the path of Eastwood, who turns neatly. That's deflected, and it's in. Southend at 2-1 up at Birmingham. Eastwood the scorer. McSheffrey will take. That's come off Clark. Oh, that's a great save by Flahaven. Nearly unlikely double for Peter Clark. He nearly scored another own goal. Mayer to Eastwood. This is Gower. He's going to go for it. And he scored. A dream for South End. It's been an absolute nightmare for Birmingham. 3 1. Make no mistake, there's going to be a few of them from now to the end of the season. I said a few weeks ago that the tickly bit is about to start and we've got to handle the situation better than what we did tonight. Another brave decision was taken a few days later, this time by the manager when Mike Taylor was replaced in goal by the young Colin Doyle. It was only supposed to be a short-term measure, but it turned into something of a masterstroke. The ball breaks the curator with a shot first time, hits the post, can use it following up and scoring as Colchester go ahead ten minutes into the second half. Free kick from... Mike Sheffery in towards Jaidi. Gherkin does well. Here's Jerome and put behind for a corner. Gherkin congratulated for providing security to Colchester's slender lead. The defending is poor here, and they've allowed Stephen Clemens to get the header in. And their momentary lapse has been punished by Clemens, who makes it 1 1. When the chips have been down and say we've lost two on the bounce to, to come back. Uh, I think the one after Christmas when we, I think we got beat two in a row and uh, went to Colchester which is one of the hardest places to go in the league and we, we got a good, we drew one each but played well and I think that gets, gets you going again and um, gives everyone the belief that no, we're, we're not a bad team, we can, we can really compete in this league. An 11.30 Sunday morning kickoff is sure to serve as a wake-up call for any sleepyheads. It's a game to sharpen the senses as well. Got it. 
towards Bentner, headed clear by Fortune, but only as far as McSheffrey. Bentner's there! And Birmingham City have taken the lead through Cameron Jerome. The flag is raised for an offside. Birmingham City's joy short-lived. That must have been a close one. Good cross, Bentner gets the flick there. That's onside, looks onside from my angle. And there he runs on to put it in the net. Bentner. Oh, that was a brilliant effort and what a fantastic stop as well by Simonson. Well, this is what this youngster's all about. This is top quality stuff. Brilliant skill from Bentner, great save from Simonson. McSheffrey. He's away from Eustace. Here's Bentner. Jerome Waste. Johnson also in there. It's Bentner with a shot, which is forced away again by Simonson. Such an awkward angle for him. And again, he has tested Steve Simonson. Here's Martin. He's in the clear. He's been denied, though, by Doyle. What a great chance that was for Stoke City and young Lee Martin. Bentner. It's a great ball in. Oh, and what a goal too. Gary McSheffrey. Birmingham City have made the breakthrough. Gary McSheffrey's 13th goal in the championship this season, and will it be lucky 13 for Birmingham? McSheffrey's goal put Blues back on track, but again the manager's substitutions were being questioned by some. I, I disagree with the booing, but probably they thought that uh, Clemens was playing a good game, but he knows what he's doing. No, it's not reasonable at all. I mean, I think he's doing quite a good job, actually. They don't support them. They're not going to get the money they need to buy the players next season. So if they do go up, where are they going to go from there? They're going to go straight back down. You think last season, you know, Blues didn't really play that well, but you play Man United Arsenal. This season, it's people like Stoke and Hull City. The St Andrews crowd is feeling blue, and so is co-owner David Sullivan. If the fans are entitled to voice their opinions on a match day, so Sullivan argues is he. Well, I think you need a reaction. When you're getting gates of 15,800, you need a reaction because you cannot sustain a promotion challenge on gates of 15,800. In his programme notes for the game against Stoke, Sullivan criticised the fans who stayed at home on Sunday morning to watch the match for free on TV. I mean, I have not missed a home league game in 14 seasons. You know, I've built my holidays, my life around those games. Even when I had a quadruple heart bypass operation, I pitched it to an away game, so I didn't miss a home game. But it is wearing, it is tiring. And, you know, if Roman Abanovich number two comes along, I'll happily walk away. Maybe we've got it all wrong. Maybe we should just be putting on entertaining football, be in the bottom half of the table, maybe get relegated, let everyone in from a fiver, be a family club with no, no, no pretensions of promotion or being a good football team. I don't know what people want. Birmingham fans have watched championship rivals spend big in the transfer window, while their club sold their best player, despite promising otherwise. Matthew Upson had to go because he could have gone for 900,000 in July. And, and it, it's, it's utter madness to, if you can get six million pounds now or 900,000 in the summer, you, you've got to take that decision. Or the, de the decision is taken for you by the financial situation. Also, the player didn't want to play for us. You cannot keep an unhappy player. Kennedy. Chidey's header. Cameron Giroud. He's taken on Kennedy and beaten him. And there's a chance for Bentner. And what a chance for Bentner. McSheffrey. 
Bentner to pursue. Up against Court. Jerome! Cameron Jerome finds the back of the opposition net for the first time since Boxing Day. And given the paucity of Birmingham's recent results, and the overall feeling surrounding the club, the problems between Boardroom and Terrace, anything on the field to lift the mood is more than welcome. Kennedy, Lawrence, here's Eiffel, angle for the shot, off the post. There's going to be big turns and twists and everybody gets edgy, so if it's squeaky bum time or the tickly bit, whatever I call it, it's, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be exciting and we should all hit the club, rally forward and, and enjoy the challenge of it. We've got no divine right to be where we are, but the players have put in a magnificent effort again and uh, I hope we can all go forward and, and bounce into the next few games and, and enjoy the challenge wherever it, wherever it takes us. Another 1-0 win and the Blues back in sight of the summit. The manager, meanwhile, was receiving support from a former teammate and current rival. Oh, it's a big game. You know, looking forward to, to, to come up against Brucey. Birmingham are having a very good season. To me, they're still clear favourites to get promoted. But again, we, we want to try and put pressure on them. And, and it's a good test for our players because, you know, against one of the top teams. There's a lot of expectations at Birmingham. In football, you know, the fans can be funny in that sense. But uh, I think if they'll go up, you know, he'd probably be a top man down there again. Hello. He is uh, taking his time with this. It's a huge clearance. Edwards. Little touch inside, and Edwards is on the run here. Oh, what a strike by Carlos Edwards. That really was a splendid goal. Sadler, little push. He's carried on the run as well. McSheffrey. Sadler. Pulls it across, it's Lawson, somehow cleared away by the goalkeeper. Shepherd. Here's Giroud. Plenty of support, Larson's peeling away. Oh, he's done well here, Seb Larson. Well, it's blocked up and he's got a second attempt. Oh, and somehow Sunderland survived. Taylor's clearance is not the best. Heysen, now Stokes. He's got the Birmingham defence in a bit of a tangle here. It's a good shot too, well saved by Doyle. But Sheffrey. Jerome has made an intelligent run here, pulling the defender wide. Campbell's in the middle with the header. Just about wide. Well, they're coming close to the stoppage time now. Look, Sheffrey's corners away. Here's Larson. It's going to fall here for five. Oh, it's in. It's in. Birmingham City have snatched it. Campbell's claiming it. Doesn't matter who scored. It means that Birmingham, in the most dramatic of circumstances, have got a point from a game that looked to be lost. Campbell is the hero. It was like being at Old Trafford, you know. It was an amazing atmosphere. I never heard it like that before, you know. So, um, yeah, they, they played their part today and, and obviously that, that point was for them, really. Not long from Taylor. And then Danny Coles with the clearing header for Nicky Forster. Former Birmingham City player, of course. And then Parler's through ball, finds Windus in space. And the 37-year-old striker does what he said he would do, score the goals, maybe to keep Hull up. Doyle's clearance. Headed away by Turner to McSheffrey. And Gary McSheffrey, brilliant instinctive try from McSheffrey. Long from Turner, chases on here, and Randy Jidey allowing the ball to bounce, and he's taken Elliott out. I think he could go here. Referee Webster, if he's uh, deemed to have been the last man in here, Jidey gets red. Stuart Elliott was really not going towards the goal. 
Taylor in a chase with Forster. And Forster's had a terrific game today against his old club, and down he goes, and this will give Hull another chance of another goal. The referee Webster says penalty, and interestingly, Martin Taylor appears to have no complaint. So it will be Windus. He's got one goal already today. He now has two, and Hull City surely have now got three points as well. Gary McSheffrey with all the big men forward. Bettner's touch, and that's got in. The goalkeeper will have to take the blame. Graham Stack turned it into his own goal. Bentner will claim it. Just 15 minutes on the clock as Birmingham take the lead. It's a howler from Stack. This is Healy. Cresswell continues the run, and he's onside. Richard Cresswell for Leeds. And Clements will get back, will he? Leeds will claim it. It's not being given, though. Rob Styles waves away the protests. As Cresswell went through, the ball bobbling goalwards, and Stephen Clements, oh, has he touched that one over the line? Birmingham looked to have survived. I know it's easy for managers to, to sit on the fence, and I've got to say that. Where I'm standing in the dugout, I can't tell. I mean, whether it's over, where it did cross the line or whatever, if we have had a bit of fortune, then we were due a bit. I have to say, it's been very, very difficult. We seem to lull from one crisis into another here, but we're top of the league with 12 games to play. times and, and to come away with, with one nil victories uh, shows good strength of character. It wasn't just the back four that keeps clean sheets, it's the, the full team and maybe it's when we win score and like um, we, we got the midfielders back in and we just knew that one nil would be enough. We had to rely on our the defensive side to, to do the business for us and they obviously did that absolutely fantastic. I think we've got the best defensive record in the league that says it. Larson looking to knock it down and here's McSheffrey with a great chance and the goalkeeper just just about enough Bentner, great 
great control, wasn't it? Nicholas Bedner. This is a solo goal for him. Another very good save from Bywater. It's a good turn, and it's a goal as well. And Rowan Vine at last is off the mark for Birmingham City, right on the stroke of half time. Maybe the last kick of the half, and how crucial is that in the race for the Premiership? Top again with a game in hand. The only sour note on the night a three match ban for leading scorer Gary McSheffrey following a straight red card. Long ball from Andy Hughes into towards the Martin. Just couldn't keep his volley down. A notable effort, nonetheless. Lappin's ball in towards Huckabee, who converges over halfway, clamors for company. Huckabee going on an inward route, has support central left and right. He's choosing to go so low. Oh, what a brilliant individual goal from Darren Huckabee. That's one right out of the top drawer. You're never going to have it your all your own way. There's going to be half the time when you have to dig in for it because this league is competitive and you've got to be prepared for that. We were being criticised for it in some quarters. We were saying we're not flair, we don't have this, we don't have that. The one thing they've got is a little bit of ball and roll our sleeves up and be prepared to work when things weren't gone as well as what we would like to have done. They had that in the locker. And when the big games come around, you know, big derby games or whatever, they were never found wanting. Birmingham City have their eyes on reclaiming top spot from Sunderland after yesterday's round of matches. They also have their eye on knocking their local rivals out of the automatic promotion picture. Massive stakes this Sunday morning here in the West Midlands. Martin Taylor. Not a particularly convincing clearance. Ellington! It had Doyle worried. Gray will take it again. Over the head of Bentner. Taylor got to it. And it's flashed across the face of goal by Rowan Vine. His expression tells you everything. It could and should have been 1 0. Johnson getting beyond Robinson. That's a lovely ball for Vine. What a save by Dean Kiley. How did he keep that out? It's in, but Mike Riley's whistle had long since gone. What instincts from Dean Kiley to keep the scores level. Birmingham enjoying their best spell of the match. Greening. Kumas. Jason Kumas, what a good ball for McShane! There's the breakthrough! An unlikely scorer, Paul McShane. What a vital goal that could be in the promotion push. Corran. Here's McShane again. Oh, was he hauled down there by Gray? Just outside the penalty area. Gray is going to be in trouble as well. Well, this could be interesting. Mike Riley, what's his interpretation going to be here? First of all, he knows it's red. A red card for Julian Gray. Birmingham City, a goal down and a man down. Johnson. Very inviting. Clements. Real nervousness in this Albion defence. Jerome got the touch, it's Damian Johnson! Would you believe it? The man who was knocked out with a broken jaw when these two met earlier this season could have just applied the knockout blow to West Bromwich Albion's automatic promotion hopes.
Larson will take the corner on the right hand side. Floating in nicely towards Shahidi, who gives Birmingham the lead. Always a threat. And such an easy opening goal there for Birmingham. Shahidi's fourth of the season. Larson's free kick is cleared only briefly. Johnson back in, but Elliot Ward gets his header and maybe Coventry could break, although Birmingham still in possession. As Stephen Kelly pumps the ball forward and Ward has lost the sight of the ball. DJ Campbell will give Birmingham the second with a lovely finish over the goalkeeper. Ward was caught out by the long ball forward by Stephen Kelly. He was ball watching, Campbell was goal getting. Jaidi's header. And this is Roland Vite, supported by Nafti and by Campbell if he goes infield. This is Nafti. And Campbell coming on, and Campbell with a special goal. Third for Birmingham. Contender for goal of the season. Vine finding Nafti. Nicely weighted cross, and Campbell coming on with a really neat volley. Away from the pressure cooker, the manager and players relaxed among sponsors and supporters at the club's annual golf day. The captain's aim, not quite as true as it was at the Hawthorns. And if anyone thought this roller coaster of a season was heading to a safe conclusion, then Easter reminded all that there were more twists and turns to come. Derby drew a couple that, that weekend, and we had Burnley at home and Barnsley away, and without being disrespectful, we, we've got to be looking to win them games. And um, if, if you're serious about getting promoted, they're the bread and butter games that you have to win. Controlled by Nafti. Enlisting the help of Kelly towards Bentner in the chest and poke forward nonchalantly into the path of McSheffrey, who's round Jensen here. The angle's tight, Vine in the middle, and scrambled away by Wayne Thomas. McSheffrey with a free kick, Burnley with all but one bank behind the ball, in towards Shady, and he failed to make any firm contact with his feet. Kick down field by Colin Doyle, picked on by Bettner. Campbell out wide to Rowan Vine. Campbell wants the ball back again. Vine goes for goal and he's not far away. Rowan Vine coming close for Birmingham City. Picked on by Gray. Here's John Spicer. A mistake there by Martin Taylor and Spicer's through here and he's finished. Silence around St Andrews, apart from the celebrating Burnley fans who see their side go ahead against the run of play. So ready, Jivey's clearance and a flick on there from Rowan Vine. Now poor Heckingbottom, that's a nice little ball from him and it's picked up by Danny Nardiello here inside the Birmingham area and he scores as well. Super goal from Daniel Nardiello for Barnsley. Sheffrey will obviously swing this one in, and Coggan, oh, he's uh, in a spot of bother here, and he could pay the penalty. Bentner's effort, it came back off the inside of the upright, seemed to take a deflection on the way. Colgan all over the place, We're under pressure from Jaidi, and it was Devaney it came off. Nothing happening over this Easter for Birmingham. A good driving run from Mwamba and they're queuing up here in this bid for this equalising goal. It's uh, Sebastian Larson might get it back in for Campbell and another block and they simply can't force it through. Oh, we had a horrible Easter and I honestly thought then, I thought, well, this is going to take some doing now. With well, five games left, we were five points behind Sunderland and four behind Derby. It was doom and gloom third in the table, four points of drifters and we got our heads together and thought, right, you know, we've got to kick on again now. For the first time in a long while, we'd let it slip out of our own hands uh, and we had to rely on other results. And that was, you know, it was hard to take that we, we'd done that. What was needed was an experienced head and the manager turned to one he knew very well. Hopefully I can bring my experience, you know, and try and get myself a few goals as well. Two, try and help the team get promoted. You know, I know a lot's been made of me coming here, but like I said, I think I'm the most unimportant player here. 
you know, because um, a lot of the players have done a lot of hard work already to get themselves in a position in now. You know, when you've got people like Andy Cole coming in, you know, all you can do is learn off, off them kind of players. You know, they've, as they've been there, done it, they've won Champions Leagues and Premier Leagues. I think sometimes this season we've had such like young, hungry attackers that are willing to work hard, and but sometimes you need that bit of bit of calmness and the link up man to bring midfielders into the game to hold, hold the ball up. And that's what he's done in the last four or five games. McSheffrey's corner. Shiny! for the first time and Cole and Bednar yes well it was a smart finish feeding off a really smart ball from the old master being little doubt that Andy Cole played his part there lovely slide rule pass from Cole and an awareness by Bednar of what he had to achieve and he achieved it well, Southampton have to chase it now. Ten minutes plus stoppages to play. Saganovsky with a header down. Hit the crossbar and the follow-up from Jones is one of the misses. Guthrie belted it against the woodwork and Jones had more or less the whole goal to aim at here. Viafara. Saganovsky! Game on again! McSheffrey's got the chance to place this. Plenty to aim for, too. It's Jaidi who rose the highest and delivers. He is delighted and with good reason. Set piece. As ever by McSheffrey, well delivered, and Jaini with a good finish. Collins does well to battle back and win possession. It's a measured ball towards Cole. Johansson watches carefully, but not carefully enough. Cole's free. It's squared across to Larson. Two goals in three minutes. Birmingham City are on fire. Really classy goal, Andy Cole inside and out, shaking off Johansson and then Larson with a perfect response. Here's Newton. Head in, oh it's off the line! Doyle's cleared it off the line. What a scramble. Well they're header by Stearman and somehow they kept it out. Hume and Newton, it's going to be Sean Newton who takes it, oh! Maybe there is a chance for Leicester in this game. Great free kick. Just ten goals conceded in 15 games since Colin Doyle's introduction, and the best was yet to come. He's a, he's a big lad and he's a good shot stopper and he fills the goal. Yeah, he's definitely big for him. Yeah. <laughs> He's very important, but he's a good shot stopper as well for a big lad. He, he can move, he can get down. Mike Taylor can count himself a little bit unlucky, really, because obviously he's, he's played a lot of the season and, then, and he's a great, great goalkeeper. But for Doyle to come in and keep Mike out, then it shows how well Doyle's done. And... Good goalkeeping by Doyle, and that is a comment that's been said so many times in recent weeks. Sometimes you've got a young player who doesn't have any fear, and Doyle certainly, certainly showed no fear. And arguably, his performances at Leicester and Wolves have gone a long way to help us get promoted. There's Cole right there in the mix and it's back off the post. Wouldn't fall to Andy Cole, followed in by McSheffrey. That could have gone anywhere, but for Wolves' safety it's gone wide. They didn't deal with the ball up. It's Clemens breaking from midfield, hits the post. And the clearance as well, even the clearance. It's cleared straight onto Gary McSheffrey's face and look at Steve Bruce. 
how is his team not in front? He can't believe it. McIndoe. Now Keo. Olifignana. Nearly fell to Kylie. Will fall to Buckroyd, and he's put it over. Glorious chances at both ends within the space of seconds. That's all happened in the last couple of minutes. Chances at both ends. Here's Kitely. Four Wolves players waiting in the middle. Kitely, what an inviting ball for Keo! How did he keep that up? That is an astonishing save by Doyle. Oh, that is incredible. Is that going to be a game-changing save? This match is exploding into life. Here's Cole. Going for goal himself, and Murray has to pull off an excellent stop himself. This is a Kiara attempt. He's got to head the ball down if he heads the ball down, but you've got to, you've got to give credit to Doyle. Flies across. Keogh must have thought he was about to peel away in celebration. Instead, he's left pondering in frustration. That might change here. Makindo, a stinging effort. Doyle, Keogh. There's no way past Doyle at the moment. Oh, how lively is this game getting? There is Joe Bothroy. Two former commentary men locking horns, and it's the man in goal who's got the better of McSheffrey. Bothroy again, Doyle to the rescue. Incredible. What's a one man goalkeeping show at the moment for Birmingham City? He really is keeping his team in it. Craddock should be underneath this, but Benton has got there first. Andy Cole has touched it round and touched Birmingham. City into the lead. It's his first goal in blue, and it could just be the one to send the Blues back to the top of the championship. That's what Andy Cole's all about, isn't it? He's looking for the pieces of his big strike partner, Bentner. It's a long clearance from Doyle, and Bentner does ever so well. Out jumps Jody Crack at Craddock, and what a deft, deft little flick. Here's Kitely. Did well to keep it in. It's in, McIndoe! Michael McIndoe has levelled it up for Wolverhampton Wanderers. A coin ball to thank for the three points against Leicester City there. Also held on at home against Southampton last week. They're holding on a little bit here. But that is not to get on to all three points, it's to hang on to any. Here's Bothroy. He goes to ground. Took a good look at it, Graham Laws, from a fair distance away. The ball's still in play. Keo. McIndoe again! Double delight for Wolves and McIndoe! Wolves have come from behind and they lead Birmingham City. He wins it back. Still going tightly. Oh, he's still going. Now that looks a very good chance for a penalty kick. The challenge from Ngotti was a little bit risky, to say the least. It's the little flick of the legs, isn't it? That's that's the only question mark. Didn't get the ball. McSheffrey with the Birmingham corner. Bentner with the Birmingham goal. 2-2. Oh, well, he got the ball, didn't he? is a bullet header, nearly broke the back of the net. A brilliant bullet from Bentner, and Birmingham are level. You just get a feeling, Dom, that we're not finished here yet. You do, don't you? No flag against Cameron Jerome. Blue players storming into the box. It is Cameron Jerome who puts Birmingham City back in front. And it doesn't look like there's chance for a Wolves comeback this time. Birmingham are heading for the top. Well, that's what he brings to the table, that pace. He stays just about level, just about level. But he uses his pace to latch onto it. And look at the two boys in the middle. He ignores them. And he slides it under Matt Murray. Good run, looks up, 
He knows his teammates are there. And he sees the, he sees the gap under Matt Murray. Keeps it low and look at that. And look at what it means to them. They probably can't believe it. Birmingham against Sheffield Wednesday at home and Preston away. And you just get a feeling from the final reckoning, this might be an afternoon that they look back on. Not quite there yet, though. Useful looking delivery, appeals for a push, and a penalty kick has been given. Unbelievable stuff. Yet again, Birmingham look like they've thrown it away. Well, they can't believe it, can they? Stephen Clements has gone too far with his protestations. Just looks like Jody Craddock runs into Ngotti, but Ngotti checks his run and sticks his hip into him. And it is Macondo. No one in the entire football leagues scored more penalties than he did last season as a Doncaster player. He has two already for Wolves this afternoon. This for his hat-trick, but the ripples, if he scores here, are much, much bigger than that. McEnroe against Doyle, who is the hero for Birmingham City, no doubt about that. Well, you just had a little, a little feeling gnawing away inside you, didn't you? It's been his day, that's for sure. Magnificent game he's had. A giant cheer from the Birmingham City supporters tells you all you need to know about how significant the events here at Molyneux this afternoon have been for Birmingham's promotion push. An extraordinary topsy-turvy roller coaster of a game. And that man in the number 13 shirt has been the lucky omen for Birmingham. A penalty save from Michael Mackendo as he looked for his hat-trick in stoppage time at the end. And a string of first-half excellence has played as big a part for Birmingham as the goals of Cole, Bender and Jerome, which cancelled out the pair, scored by Michael Mackendo in the second half. I think it's got to be one of the most dramatic games I think I've been involved in. It's just an honour to play in, play in games like that. It's a roller coaster game and we managed to come out on top. It was end to end and um, there was loads of chances. It was a great game to play in and it was a great spectacle to watch and uh, I'm sure everybody remembered that game for a long, long time and especially Doyley uh, with his heroics at the end. I went home and watched it again on, on TV so you want to see, you know, just in case I've missed anything. Just looking back on it now, I wouldn't want to watch it again. I just think I would have won that one, it's out of the way. <laughs> The dramatic win, coupled with defeat for Sunderland at Colchester, meant that Blue's fate was in their own hands. Two wins from the final two games would bring both promotion and the championship. Friends for 35 years since their days together at the famous Walls End Boys Club, but for one afternoon at least, implacable foes. Steve Bruce desperate to avoid the playoffs, Brian Laws eager to be in them. Cole. Jeffrey. For Wednesday. Oh, caught late by Moamba, who's already been booked. Well, I would have thought that is a second yellow card. It is, he's off. Fabrice Moamba has been sent off. And Birmingham, who are so desperate to win today, must play for the last 33 minutes with 10 men. McLean. Disguise pass, underside of the bar, and Tuckey! Okay. Kenny Lunt had the chance there, denied by the woodwork. Well, in races such as this, with so many runners involved, on days such as this, so frustrating for Birmingham so far, one moment of inspiration can change the mood. It's Sebastian Larson. Oh, and the deflection nearly took it onto Jerome's forehead. Jaidi, goalkeeper couldn't claim. Cameron Jerome scores, and the calmest man inside St Andrews is the Birmingham manager. Oh, what could that goal mean? Last week, his late, late winner at Wolves. Precious points 
Manchester barely describes the feelings that 29,000 Brummy supporters are going through. This is Larson. And he's recovered his senses enough to beat Tommy Spur. Two in the middle for him. Still it's Larson. Oh, extraordinary! Champagne corks popped after Derby failed to deliver. Finally, it was confirmed the Blues were going straight back up. We battled hard. Everyone knows this. This championship's been so close this season, and it's been such a tough, tough league to get out of. But um, we've done it now. You can start thinking about obviously the likes of Man United, Liverpool, Chelsea, and I think with that in mind, it's just such a great buzz. chance of claiming the big prize just one game away, the annual end-of-season dinner brought players and supporters together to recognise those who'd made the most telling contribution in the push for promotion. £900 and over there at the back, first time to you, Sol. And the young player of the season, Fabrice Mwamba. The Junior Blues player of the season, Gary McSheffrey. The BBC WM Breakthrough Award. Please welcome Colin Doyle. And the players, player of the season, Stephen Clements. The winner is Stephen Clements. The player of the season, Stephen Clements. You don't really get players like me win sort of player of the years awards. I don't think it's usually the goal scorers getting all the headlines, but um, it's probably my greatest personal achievement in football. It's amazing in 12 months what football does. Here 12 months ago, probably this week, we were all desperate what to say. Do you know what you're doing? Bruce out. We know how it goes. No, all seriousness. I will have to say one thing. The hard work starts now. OK? Good luck. One game left, one victory required to guarantee the championship. Playoff chasing Preston stood in the way of some long overdue silverware. Come on, Blue Boys! Come on! We're going to be back in that Premier League and we're going to shoot up and we're going to do what's proud they are. We got a 1-0 as well, he counted and that's what done it. Bruce, he was looking at getting the sack and uh, he's turned it round and all credit to him. It's a legend, isn't it? It's class. He got us promoted before and he's done it again and I think he'll keep us up this time. I was one of the ones booing at Norwich and uh, I'm ashamed of it, but uh, it was a bad day. It was uh, one great, but he's, he's come good. And speakers I find. Sign my shirt, he's a legend. Love him. Well done, Steve. <laughs> See you later.
week of celebration for Birmingham City could be crowned by a win here today, which would make them champions at this level of football for the first time in over half a century. But Preston's need is very, very clear. They have to win and they have to hope that those above them slip up. David Newton touched back off the post. So nearly the perfect start for Preston. Whaley. Newton gives chase, he's going to get there as well. Good goalkeeping by Doyle, and that is a comment that's been said so many times in recent weeks, isn't it? Kelly. Looking for Bentner, here's McSheffrey who's got him behind for the first time, cut back for Cole, what a good block by Chilvers, not over yet, Larson back off the Preston crossbar. Appeals for handball in there as well. well that's a fantastic block, lovely move, McSheffrey does ever so well, unselfish, you think Cole's just going to put the back of the net, and that one hits the bar in the follow-up, but they're claiming it was handball. It's a good strike, beats the goalkeeper, hits the bar, but... Maybe should have got a penalty there. It was a, a block from Andy Cole, but it looked to strike the arm. Here's Bentner, lovely ball up, and that should have been 1-0, but McSheffrey somehow has put it over from point-blank range. Good support by Larson, excellent ball in, and there is Gary McSheffrey, who's put it wide again. Well, a chance here for Birmingham to get their big men forward again. Jaidi's up, great goal-scoring season he's had. He's in the mix, Jaidi! Dear me, how many headers are they going to miss? McSheffrey is onside here. This could finish it off for Birmingham. And a hat-trick of opportunities squandered by Birmingham's top scorer. Well, Sunderland... Looks like it's going to be their day, doesn't it? Birmingham running out of time to get the goal, and Sunderland have a fourth. And they are heading for the championship. And Whaley has turned it in! That should be the goal to make Sunderland champions! It just wouldn't be Birmingham City if things worked out to perfection. But the job was to bounce straight back to the Premier League. Mission accomplished. We've made it harder for ourselves at times, but, but we've got there in the end and uh, thankfully we'll be playing Premiership football next season. Every single club that comes from the Championship up to the, the Premiership needs to strengthen the squad. I'm sure there'll be players added to the squad, a bit more quality maybe, but there's definitely a good base to go on. Well, the one thing we've what we've got to do is learn from the mistakes of, la of last time. We won't be going down that route, that's for sure. It's paid off to bring in uh, the younger players that want to play for the shirt, want to play for Birmingham City, I'm not just here for like a payday. It's got all the capabilities of, of being a great club you know, in the Premiership, which is what everyone wants. First of all, got to believe that we're a Premiership team next season, that, that we're, we're good enough for it. We're not going to be arrogant, but, but we're, not, we're not going to be scared, that's for sure. It's going to be difficult extremely difficult because it always is for any championship team who's gone to the Premier League but we've done it before made a fist of it and make sure we're highly competitive and that's what we're aiming of make sure we try and establish ourselves again over the next two three years as a premiership outfit again.